getting set up for our live today. And today we are sewing a multi-layer, we are hemming a multi-layer crepe dress. And as usual, I'm going to be having some Q&As during the hemming process. So basically, this is just a sew with me. And uh, normally we do this 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, but my bride was running late today. So I had to start at 2.30. Anytime there's a schedule change like that, I announce it on my stories. And then also um, in the community tab here on YouTube. So welcome. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take where these pins are. You guys have seen me do this part before. I'm going to separate them out and make sure I mark each layer. And I'm going to kind of tell you my thought process too as I hem. Um, and I know a lot of you are very faithful subscribers and followers and you're familiar with my setup. I don't want to spend too long on it, but I want to make sure everyone is acquainted with it. Basically, the way I mark my hems is I align the side seams of the skirt because I have the dress pulled taut up there. See that with the S hook? Have it pulled taut. So I just align the side seams hello guys oh my goodness thank you for joining i didn't know how you guys would manage with it being um 30 minutes behind today but you know stuff happens and obviously for all of us with our work the number one priority in our business is to make sure that the brides are dressed and ready for their wedding day so that's what I was taking care of. A bride was running behind and we just kind of rolled with it. So thank you for joining me. But basically what I'm doing is I'm aligning these uh, side seams here. And um, I need to take these pins that I marked the floor with her. Um, I need to take them and kind of get them translated to the under layers as well. That's super important. I just marked them all at once. You don't always get to do that. If it's a fuller gown, and I have a, I have a very deep dive video into this, but if it's a fuller gown, you're gonna kind of mark it by sections through the layers. Like I would hem the crinlin first, and then the solid layers, and then cut the tool while they stand in it, that kind of thing. Um, but for this, this is very straightforward, which makes it a great um, dress for teaching. Um, because she also has a very like even um, leg length and stance so it's going to be hemmed the same um, I can do the mirror hem with no problem if her stance was not the same like when I tested it while she was standing in it um, if it was say like two inches here and three inches here I would mark that and then I would be catching it now and I would I would start it here at the center front and I would cut to the side seam and then I would flip it and go from the side seam pin to that pin that was in the middle and to the center front. I bring it back together and go ahead and mirror the train. So that's how I would handle that if her stance wasn't even because that's fairly common. But I always cut the inside layers first. So I'm gonna figure out kind of where that pin is. And I'm going to mark that. How are you guys doing? Do not forget you are welcome to chat amongst yourselves in the um, live chat there. And always in the comments too, you know. Um, and these so with me's are also Q and A's. So I will bounce back and forth certainly and read your questions. 
and try to answer your questions. So I spend just about as much time on that as I do the actual sewing. Because you guys know I have videos of most of this stuff. All right. All right, so this one, let's get rid of these little tethers here. All right. Here we go. So we're ready to hem this lining layer. And like most of them, it's got a little bit of a sweep train. Not much. But I generally level that off. Um, because I like my linings kind of long. I mean, maybe an inch, inch and a half off the floor. But I like for them when they're dancing and they kind of bend their knees and step back a little bit. I want them to be able to step back and not hit this. And this is kind of like a safety thing. So if this is the floor, I'm just going to kind of come up just a little bit and I'm going to cut straight across. The way I have this hooked onto the table, I can pull it taut and what is straight to the table is truly straight on the dress. As long as I have my dress aligned up here and the hang loops are the same length, um, the waist is hitting at the same spot up here, then we're good to go. Let me show you what I'm talking about when I say the waist is hitting at the same spot. Right there. See that? That's a nice even tug that we've got going on here. All right. So those of you who um, registered the first wave for the virtual retreat, the ones where I did that open and shut, <laughs> I took a first wave of just a small number of people who wanted to register for information about the virtual retreat. Um, those people received like a golden ticket email back on August 23rd, I think it was. Um, for those people, um, check your spam and email folders because I sent out an email at midnight last night and it's super, super important. So check that email. All of the others of you that when that first window closed, there's still space for you. I promise. Um, I did it that way on purpose. So there would still be space for you. So there's no need to panic. Um, but I did want people who were 100% certain to be able to, you know, get in line first if they wanted to register. So for um, the rest of you that have hit the register button since then, your name is in an email list. And after tonight, I will be reaching out for you guys, and I will give you guys a link where you can sign up for the virtual retreat. So that's super exciting. And here we go. We're going to cut this. And again, I'm cutting it pretty straight to the table. I'm not too worried about this here. Um, because her dress... I hemmed it to the floor in the front, I pinned it to the floor in the front, and then at the sides, I pinned it for starting a taper into reducing the width of that train or the footprint, reducing the footprint of that train. So I am ignoring the side pin on this and going for just a relatively straight with the table kind of cut on that lining. So the lining is cut. Woohoo! All right. And I'm so glad on this channel. Um, you know, when I started out, I was like, I felt like most sewists who have been sewing for a while can reverse engineer just about any dress and figure out how to alter it. But I thought... I really need to share a lot of time-saving alterations and money-saving alterations because those are the ones that are a little bit trickier to figure out and people are kind of like looking for validation or permission, so to speak, for what they've been doing. Not permission from the bride. That's understood. You would have to do that before you took a shortcut. But that was like a big goal of mine with this channel 
And it has turned out to be such a service to all the sewists and the brides because, you know, we just went through COVID and now global inflation. Um, so shortcuts, being able to take shortcuts that don't compromise the outside look of the dress, don't cause any sort of permanent damage or that kind of thing. I feel like it's more important today than it has ever been. Um, so I'm so glad that we do that on this channel. And here goes me taking out my safety pins that were marking the floor originally. Now this dress is a little different. If you saw my video about um, buying fabrics for wedding gowns for designing your own line, um, this is one of the hems I showed you. It's kind of funny, isn't it? It's two layers, and you would almost think it was like a bagged hem, but no, it's it's a rolled hem. It's surged and rolled. So let me show you the detail of that. So different. Do, 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 do. See, guys, I don't clean up my stuff for you because I don't want to make you feel bad. Like, you got to have all your stuff clean all the time. When I work, whew, I got a mess going. These are the hems. <laughs> my hem graveyard over there. Anyways, this is how this is. You see that? This is knit. This is crepe. They kind of put them together. They surged it and then did a roll. So that's what we're going to be doing. The reason why I wanted to mention that is because I've got one more step with this type of hem than what I normally do. I'm going to make sure that these layers, see they're held together at the seams. But just when we're kind of in like no man's land through here and the layers could kind of, hmm, I'm going to make sure that I pin them up here too to keep them from getting too wonky because they might flow completely different once we cut them apart. Also, it's going to be important for me to do that type of cut that leaves a little bit of a jagged um, notch. I just call it notch as you go. Um, because we need to be able to align the notches while we merge together. It's going to be super important. And if it's anyways tricky to get it to surge together, I really wouldn't be surprised if it was. I'm going to kind of base the two together with a free motion straight stitch. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before, but I don't even know if I've shown that on a video. But today might just be the day. That is how I based my zippers too, by the way. It's kind of like a free motion. All right. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure these pins are going in a totally different direction because we don't want any confusion about which one is marking a hem length, right? So. As soon as I get these marked, I'm going to look at your comments, okay? So drop a question in there if you have a question. Now, while I'm doing this, I might well go ahead and talk about the virtual retreat because you guys are probably going to have some questions about that since I brought it up and enrollment is starting to starting to open, okay? So the virtual retreat, I can talk pricing too. A, a physical retreat, if you come and like um, stay the week and hang out here at the shop and see the back end of things, it's a thousand dollars a week, okay? Um, the virtual retreat is less than that. So it's going to save you on lodging and travel was the main reason why I wanted to do that. Most people didn't have a hard time with $1,000. Like really, what is $1,000 when you're starting a business? Like every time you turn around, it's like $5,000, you know, or something. So it's really like the retreat itself was super affordable. It was taking off work, lodging, and travel that was kind of killing everybody. So that's why I decided to do the virtual retreat. So the virtual retreat is going to be going on day and night for... Uh, five days. It's the Monday after U.S. Thanksgiving. So it's the last Monday of November going into the first Friday of December. So it's five days and I'm going to kind of run it around the clock-ish. 
um, because we have a worldwide audience. And I wanted to make sure this is my opportunity for our, um, you know, Australians, New Zealanders, um, Philippines, UK, people far and wide. Um, I want them to be able to attend a retreat. So I'm going to have smaller breakout Zoom Q&A sessions where you're actually going to see my face in the virtual retreat. I'm going to be recording face-to-face -face and doing lives with you face-to-face. -face. But the Zoom Q&As will be um, very small sessions based on like a comfortable time for a certain time zone is how we're going to do that. So I'm going to be the one staying up <laughs> the wee hours of the night or getting up in the wee hours in the morning so you guys can uh, join it virtually and comfortably is the idea. So that uh, will be open for enrollment. It is capped because I want to give everybody personal attention, um, but that'll be open for enrollment starting tomorrow if you don't have the golden ticket. If you have the golden ticket, you need to check your spam now, your spam folder, and get in there. Um, but yeah, so it's just $800 um, US dollars, and um, it's going to cover those small Zoom q and A's. I'm going to put a lot of time into that. It's going to cover the back room tour of my entire studio and the front of the house. So you are going to get to see the front of the house tour and the back of the house tour in detail like never seen before. Um, you'll get to see my customer experience, my fitting areas. I will have live fittings with a bride, um, live clients, um, check out and processes and all that kind of stuff. So um, there's going to be a lot going on and then sewing instruction. So give me a thumbs up if you are excited about that. And then let me just read your questions before we start cutting on this. Let me find you here. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, how often do I do this? Typically, uh, oh, North Carolina. Nice. Um, typically, I do this from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. But today was a little different because my bride was running late. So I had to start at 2.30. So I did put a notice up in my Instagram stories and on the community page of YouTube that we were starting at 2.30 today. So today was a little bit different. But we'll just, you know, adjust. Um create or upcycle. I'm not sure what you're talking about when you say them. Do you create or upcycle them? Do you mean the wedding gowns? I'm mostly doing alterations if that's what you're asking. Okay. Greetings from Tucson. Do I ever cut with a rotary cutter? Naomi. No, I do not. I have some. I hate them. It's so sad. And I know some of you guys love them. And please, like, if I hate something or love something, please don't take that personally. I am all about you do you, boo. Like, whatever works for you, you do it. But I've just not gotten rotary cutters to work. I just feel like like you, you do it and it works for, like, 20 seconds. And then it starts, like, skipping and you got little bits that don't cut. And they just don't seem to stay sharp. And then I'm scared I'm going to get my finger and... Like, if you go around a curve, your fabric starts to wrinkle up. I don't know. I just can't do a rotary cutter. So, there's that. Let's see. Do I make gowns from scratch? Sometimes I do, but not often. Oh, thank you. Uh, Messina, is that how you say your name? Messina, thank you for taking note of that. We will see you every 2 p.m. on Thursdays. Welcome from South Carolina. Well, the Mid-Atlantic region is large and in charge today in their representation. Okay, Todd, what size scissors do you prefer for cutting the hems? Love your videos, by the way. I've learned so much. I actually, I don't think, I think these are my 10s. What are these? These are some good ones. Okay, most commonly, the ones I'm going to grab are my 9 inches. I would say some 9s. And my girls have moved all of my shears. Todd. Are you actually a woman who is like on her husband's account or are you a man on this account? Because guys, I say it all the time, 
My audience, I can look on the back side of YouTube and it will tell me in the analytics, my audience is 13% men. And they don't hardly ever speak up. So Todd, if you're a woman, welcome too. But I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're a man, welcome. And thank you for speaking up because I'm always like, guys, like, I don't want you to feel you're, like you're alone. That's why I try to say seamsters and sewists and stuff like that because I want everybody to feel welcome. All right, so let's see here. Musina. Musena, I think I'm saying your name right. You're spelling your pronunciation. I hope I got it. Um, you can also uh, DM me an audio <laughs> on Instagram and I'll hear it. Um, Victoria, hello from Florida. All right. I hope you are doing okay down there, Victoria. Oh my goodness. We all need to grab a mop and go down there and help her. Um, what brand of scissors? Okay. So these are the Moon Dial. I always called a moon dial, and then I got roasted in the comments, and supposedly, I guess, they're moon dial, but I think I even heard from some of their own um, advertisements, I think I even heard the company call a moon dial one time, so I don't know how you say it, but anyways, uh, these are the moon dials. I also often use the Wiss. These are not my favorites. Okay, these are, I do have a whole video on this, by the way, and a short. I don't like the nut that protrudes out because it can kind of like pick up your fabric sometimes. I like it recessed. They have it with it flushed. And I more often get the Wiss brand and the Moon Dial. But these are tanks. I mean, they'll last forever. They, For me, anyways, they have done so well. Now, the ones that are... Um, the most satisfying to use. They're just beautiful. Let's see, where are they? These. They have that beautiful click. These. Listen. Same brand, but a whole different, whole different vibe. See the difference how this has like the, I don't know, it's got a rougher look to it. And this is like highly polished. It's almost like a mirror. And this is that recessed. But these are both tens, I think. And I usually use nines more than anything. But most um, most enjoyable scissors to cut with are these tens, the, the fancy tens. There's that nut. How much more flush it is. Um, but if I get the Wiss 9-inch that are kind of similar to this, except for this is flush, but it's that rougher metal, if I get those, they tend to last forever. These, um, these, it's like a softer metal. They, they get messed up really easy. So I quit buying those for the shop, even though they're more enjoyable. All right. Oh, I said it perfect. You know, if I can just remember, goodness. Lucina. Let's see. Todd, I am, he says. Welcome aboard. We have a man that'll speak up around here. <laughs> Thank you, Todd, for leaving a comment. Please don't be shy in the YouTube comments. It's so nice because I feel like once a man will break the ice and start leaving comments, the other men will speak up too. And there are some amazing male bridal alteration sewists out there and I don't want you to feel muted in this community at all so let's see oh yeah they sound like they're good yes they are how do I keep them sharpened I also have a video on that I have a sharpener machine um if you go to my youtube channel and search um shears I think that'll come up You'll get lots of videos on my shears. I've covered all of that. And I even teach you how to sharpen them with the machine. That machine has been hard to get since COVID. I will say that. Okay, um, let's see. Jade Sola. Jada Sola. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. You guys have beautiful names. First time joining, welcome. Okay, so Miss White is a dressmaker specialized in women's bridal. Do you ever get clients who want men's wear? I don't, actually. 
Um, that doesn't usually ever come up. Now, if they have something like few years ago I had one that had like a it was like a fitted jumpsuit thing that they were gonna go away in um and they wanted me to tailor it and the rise it was like a one-piece jumpsuit the rise was like um not rise the crotch was too high that she needed the crotch let down a little bit um so she, her body was too long. Her torso was too long for the pantsuit. Uh, she wanted me to do that. And I said, no, because like that is like, that's tailor. And I feel like you need to go to a tailor who does that all day, every day. Like you bring me a hem. That's great. This is what I do all day, every day. Um, so that's what I told her. I told her no. I mean, could I have like cracked out my old tailoring books or watched some YouTube videos and done it? Yes. But am I looking to add that skill set to what I'm offering brides? No. So that's, that's what I did there. All right. So for this length, now you remember the lining, you guys can keep leaving comments and I'll get back to them in just a little bit. But, um, you remember for the lining, I cut it a little bit short because I want the lining to be like an inch, inch and a half shorter than the outer layer of the dress. Um, and I'm just going to surge that. I'm thinking this girl. Yes. She has the low number. I, I give my brides a range. I give them prices. I'll say, you know, the numbers for this dress. I'll say 100, 300. And if they're low budget, I'll say Please do not take those numbers as real numbers because you need to be making more than $100 when you're altering a wedding gown. I was just saying. So her low number is underlined. So we're supposed to take shortcuts on her. So um, now what I'm going to do is these like to kind of, you know, when she's wearing it, it's going to kind of drape back just a little bit. There'll be a little bit of suction before her feet sometimes. And I don't want the dress to come up and show her toes when that happens. I don't hem it to where this is hovering right at the floor when she's standing stock still and we've rocked the dress before her shoes, rocked it out. That's not what I hem for. I want it just a little bit longer than that, probably like an inch longer than that, so that when she moves a little bit and the suction's in and just drapes a little bit and moves, it's still covering her feet. Um, mileage may vary as far as what brides want. So I'm going to do, I want it an inch longer, and then we have to surge and roll. So I'm going to do it like an inch and a half, inch and a half longer, okay? And I'm going to put these little notches, you guys remember this, sounds like I'm speaking Spanish, buenas noches. I'm going to put these notches in, can you see them? I'll show it close in a minute. That way I can get all my layers to align. Because remember, I'm cutting four layers. This dress fabric's a little strange. They're connected at the side seams, so I don't have to worry about it there. Please take a second while I'm doing this and hit the like button so that YouTube will share this. It helps me so much. It may not be in your budget right now to attend the retreat. If, if you don't have money set aside for um, growing your business, investing and in opening your business right now, and you're just barely eking by, and you just can't make it, I have been there. <laughs> No judgment. I offer lots of free stuff on here for you guys. You can do it. A lot of people have opened, opened shop like that. So no shame in your game. But one free thing you can do that really helps me is to hit that like button. All right. I don't want to I don't want to unpin that. Why did I do that? I want to keep that together. So I'm gonna leave these up here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. It looks messy, huh? That's how I'm going to align my layers. That right there is how I'm going to align my layers when I go to surge it. 
and stitch it. All right, so there's that. Let's see here. Let's read these comments. We're kind of running out of time. We are running out of time. It's almost three. 2.58. Let's see what you got here. And you guys are aware of what I'm saying I'm going to do next, right? I'm just going to do a real narrow rolled hem here, nice and flat. And then one little roll with a straight stitch and press. And that's going to give me back that original edge. And that's still, that's still a low budget hem. That won't cost her too much. That'll give me that nice edge that they did. Okay. All right, let's go over these questions here. I'm just going to do the rolled serge on the uh, lining layer. Let's see. Um, yes, um, that's great. I'm going to check for shears on your page. I do have that on the products page of my website. You're right. Miss White, you're welcome for the response, honey. Tan, do you ever have a problem with hypo scent flowing out of the tube as you're trying to use it? How can this be improved? Oh, my word, yes. <laughs> They're tubes. It's a problem. It's a problem. It, you know, springs up little holes. It gushes out around the neck. Yeah. Sadly, we lose like probably a third of every tube and it's pretty expensive stuff. But sadly, we lose it just because of the, the thing it's in. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it is like needle point accuracy. Oh, guys, do you see the difference in this camera? That was a big conversation this week, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. People get so stirred up. When you say, what's your favorite camera phone and why? But that's detailed there. So you can see that this is like a needle stopper that they put in there. And then here comes the stuff. <laughs> here it comes. Um, and yes, once, once you use it, sometimes it takes a bit to get it started back up. And then, um, and then other times it won't stop. Try to get that back in there. It's so, <laughs> it is like so precise. Here we go. But yeah, so it was right out of the neck of that. So, nope, I don't know to do it but it's still hands down my favorite clear cement because it's so it's a tiny applicator i don't have to worry about it running the dresses you know so you do have to watch it like once it starts like a little tear in the side where you get the little bit oozing out of the packaging um i just wrap it if um if it's like really going at it you know i'll wrap it in fabric or something so that it won't drip on the gown but so that's how I handle it. Thank you guys for all the thumbs up. That is so sweet. <laughs> no, Angie, I thought it was just me on the cement. No, it's not operator error. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I know, Maria, I know I will sign. Just don't know it might be second time. Oh, goodness, I don't know what that means. I know I will sign. Just don't know it might be second time. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, Messina, I think I'm saying it right. Gonna binge watch. Thank you. The lives are typically an hour long. They're usually from two to three. Um, but today it was cut short because of my bride running late and I had to start at 2.30. So today is just 2.30 to 3 and we're just a smidge over the 3 o'clock. So I need to get going because obviously I got some sewing to do. I've got my dresses lined up over here. For sewing and um, I gotta I gotta get them done and obviously I don't get it done when I'm doing Q&A's and worried about camera angles and all that stuff so you guys have a beautiful week as you know you can always reach me um, in my DMs on Instagram at bridal sewing just reach out um, and you know if you ever need anything you just reach out don't be shy Jacqueline's own. Hello, everyone. Just joining in. 
So French couture. She's washing her hands. <laughs> Maria for the virtual retreat. Okay. So you might sign up on the second wave. Is that what you're saying? Okay. All right, guys. Well, you have a beautiful week. We'll be in touch. And like I said, virtual re retreat sign up is happening this week. It is a capped group. So get in for sure. And it is $200 cheaper than a physical retreat. Plus there's no food, lodging, travel, and taking off of work. So sign up, guys. I can't wait to spend the week with you guys and talk directly to the camera in my face. Yeah, you're awesome too, honey. Have a beautiful day. Bye.